Thank you for attending. I'm Marcus Brennan, Box Technologies. Um, I'm unfortunately second billing for the show. Our star performer, Jason Glynn, head of business solutions, avid Chelsea fan, was at the match last night with Barcelona. Apparently they did rather well, largely due to Jason's vocal support and he's lost his voice. So you've got me. So today we're going to explore improving loss prevention through system integration. I want to look at some two particular areas. One, improving the process of investigation. See if we can deliver some efficiencies by integrating systems. And also look at how we can deliver some real-time alerts. Let's tell the business when theft is happening real time. Now, when I was a retailer, I was in area management, it always amazed me how much of my resource, how much of my time was spent working with the loss prevention team, um, investigating in tribunals, etc. Some of the cases that were far less impactful on my resource um, were those that where we caught someone red-handed or very soon after the event. And that's where I think real-time alerts um, can really come into their own. So we'll have a look at what we're doing. Um, you need to understand our approach to put into context this presentation. Uh, Box Technologies, we started shifting um, hardware to the EPOS um, marketplace about 20 years ago. Uh, we developed a very close relationship with our hardware manufacturers. And when customers came to us with um, a more unique solution, uh, we we started developing customizations or integration with other hardware manufacturers in order to solve their problems. Now, some of those customers happen to be also software houses. So that obviously led into us working with software houses, hardware manufacturers, to uh, provide complete end-to-end -end novel solutions for our customers. And we've then decided to apply this to the loss prevention market, which is a fairly novel approach. There aren't many people doing that out in the marketplace, as far as I'm aware. So let's have a look at what we, um, what we do. The centre of our solution is the Evigolo DVR. Evigolo. It's not from Yorkshire. I don't have a classical education, but apparently it's Latin for be watchful. Evigolo, to say it's a digital video recorder, DVR, is a bit of a misnomer. It's, it's a powerful piece of software. And the tech is, the developers tell me it's architect-driven, architect um, object-driven architecture. By that, in my language, means we've got two halves of the system. We've got trigger objects and we've got reactive objects. The simplest trigger object that we all know is movement. The simplest reaction, movement, uh, reaction object is record. We all know that as a VMD, visual motion detection. Evigolo can accept inputs from many other devices on the network, um, not just cameras, and the reaction can be many and various, not just record. So it becomes to be a far more powerful loss prevention management tool. And the relationships that we can develop between triggers and reactions can be many. Many to many, one to one, many to one. We can start um, asking Invigo to look for some very complex uh, events. And in doing so, we turn the system around from being the historical reactive loss investigation, let's have a look at someone on the CCTV nicking something from us, to someone's nicking from us now, let's take some action. So what are we integrating with this system? The first, and it seems blindingly obvious, is the IP camera. Now, I don't just mean taking a feed in terms of a video feed from an IP camera. As um, uh, IP cameras are, get, are gaining in maturity, the manufacturers are, are struggling to find a way of differentiating their product uh, from the competition. They're, they're encumbered by the laws of physics, by the laws of optoelectronics. So more and more intelligence is being fed into the firmware of the IP camera. So quite a lot of the functionality of IP cameras now is way beyond that you can find on most digital video recorders. We've got customer counting, customer flow density, alien object identification, and all sorts of analytics. Now this gives us an opportunity, the hooks if you like, for our developers to integrate with those cameras and deliver that functionality to our customers in a format that's more presentable to them. The other obvious system which we um, integrate with is EPOS. His, e EPOS um, integration with CCTV has been out for donkey's years. Um, historically, this has been uh, at a text le uh, overlay level on the video stream, so it's been graphical. We integrate at the data level, and that's important in two respects. We marry the data with the image at point of creation and evidentially watermark that. So that is evidence. What went on on the till, what went on around the till, is submissible in a court of law. But more importantly, because we're accepting that uh, as data, we can begin to analyse in real time what's going on in that till. And we can start to configure some very um, time-effective triggers, such as a refund when customer's not standing there, etc., and start emailing, texting, or whatever we wish to do. 
But that's EPOS providing data to our Evigilo system, to our CCTV. We've also turned that round, which sounds a bit strange. We can also feed images to our EPOS application. Why would you do this? Um, we've had various situations, particularly in smaller retailers, where the back office might not be manned all the time. So upon a vent, let's say an alarm at the back door, movement at the back door, the live streamed images can be a pop-up on the EPOS application in order to alert the till operator that something's going on the back door that they need to be aware of. Or um, a suspect walks in through the, um, through the door and the till operator is the only person available and can call up the um, DVR from their um, EPOS application and monitor what's going on with that um, suspect as they're walking around the store while still taking transactions. At this point, I'd like to introduce you to Smart Till. Now, Smart Till's a cracking bit of kit. Um, uh, produced by one of our long-standing suppliers, Cash Basis. Cash Basis, you probably all know, is um, one of the, probably the best-known cash draw manufacturers in this country. Now, Smart Till is a cash drawer that knows at all times how much cash is contained within. Now, this has the potential to revolutionize your cash handling processes. Obviously, in cashing up, shift changes, customer short changes or um, cash back queries, no X-rays, no tilling up, no, no taking that EPOS offline because it knows how much cash is in there. And also, because the, uh, the till drawer is an IP device, sits on the network and addresses the smart till manager which resides in the back office, we can start giving alerts to store management when cash pickups are required or when change replenishments down to denomination are required in that particular till. Now, obviously, the additional benefits with loss prevention um, are, are, are quite astounding, particularly if we now integrate Smart Till with EPOS. So EPOS, cash transaction, is now passing to Smart Till what uh, cash should be received. Smart Till is measuring what cash has gone in, and the two can be reconciled in real time. So after every cash transaction, we now know what should be in that drawer. If there is any discrepancy, we can now integrate Smart Till with Evigilo. So as a trigger, cash discrepancy, Evigilo goes and emails, alerts, streams, or whatever to the store manager, we've just been shortchanged five pounds. Someone's got the hand in the till for 10 pounds. An action can be immediately taken. Now we can also turn around that into integration and feed Evigilo images back to the smart tool manager. And this really um, drives efficiency when the manager is starting to look at why we're down on a particular cash transaction. I've taken some screenshots to explain what I'm talking about. This is the smart tool back office. These are the transactions, and we can see we've got various discrepancies. We highlight a discrepancy, hit a button. Now smart tool manager is going out over the network, requesting from the Evigilo unit to stream from the correct camera, from the correct transaction, the live footage, the uh, archive footage rather, of what went on when that uh, till was shortchanged. So very quickly, we can complete the investigation and see what happened, which resulted in that 10 pound shortage. Data mining. Data mining is probably, I think, the one of the most valuable tools um, the loss prevention operative can have in post-event identification of theft or fraud at point of sale. Obviously, integration has to have taken place by EPOS in order to feed that data mining some data to mine. But what we can also do now is feed the data mining tool um, the cash position after every transaction. So we can, um, with that data, we can really increase the potency of the data mining tool. Now, to aid in that investigation process, we can uh, integrate Evigilo with data mining. So rather like the example with um, uh, Smart Tool Cache Manager, we can feed images upon request driven by the data mining tool. So we can complete the investigation and see if indeed that pattern that we found in data mining resulted in some sort of fraudulent activity from the images. But the important point is, once we've found that pattern through our data mining tool, we've learned where theft or fraud is probably taking place within our business. We then pass that back to the Evigilo and configure Evigilo to actively look for that pattern. And that can be configured as a real-time alert. So in real time, where we have found data mining theft is taking place, we can then convert that into real-time alerts to say it's happening now. Take action now. Digital signage. We um, supply digital signage solutions to retail, hospitality, and the banking sector. 
So we started looking at how we could leverage that technology in helping with our loss prevention. The simplest integration um, is taking a feed from an IP camera and populating your digital signage with the image. A bit of a blunt tool, um, not an awful lot of benefit there. Smacks to me of the old time spot monitors where they were just ignored. Um, and the only people that took um, any notice of spot monitors was your professional thief who really wanted to see where your blind spots are in order to nick from you without being seen. If, however, we integrate a Vigolo with the digital signage, we can leave the digital signage there working away, doing what it should be doing, the marketing department earning its money by advertising. But upon event where we need that digital signage, we can take it over. So that event could be a uh, panic button, a point of sale. Hit the panic button and the, the digital signage is taken over with a stream and a customer who's been abusive, his mugshot is all over the store and it calms him down, leaves, protects your member of staff. I've also had a look at how we could use digital signage in t um, for operational efficiencies. Now there are some systems out there which are entirely focused at the um, over 18 sales to help with the licensing laws, help prove the retailer is adhering to the over 18 licensing laws. Now we've integrated already Evigolo with EPOS, so we can now trigger upon over 18 sales. Now the actu action of that trigger could be, okay, populate the digital signage at point of sale with picture of customer, are you over 18? Now if we then make that digital signage interactive, i.e. it's a touch screen, are you over 18, yes or no? Yes can cause a trigger, we can create a little archive which is completely separate for your over 18 sales and we've got a whole history there for um, due diligence for the licensing authority. PC, by implication we have already integrated with PCs because data mining, uh, smart tool manager, etc., all resides on the PC. So we can already feed images to a PC. But what we've looked at, and this sounds rather strange, is feeding images from the PC back to a Vigilo. Well, what do I mean by that? It's rather like the user of the PC has a little camera on their shoulder, and we are recording exactly what's going on on that screen in real time as though it's a video feed. Now, there are many software um, applications out there for key logging, which take a screen grab of what's going on. It's not that. This is as though the screen is being filmed. Now, we've deployed this in various different scenarios. Um, firstly, is pointing that application to an EPOS. So with our previous um, integration, we've got the till data going through, the image. But then we've also got what's going on on the screen. So we can see the touch button being pressed. So we get the complete picture about how that till was being used at the time we were trying to investigate. We've also used it in covert operations in an office environment. Covert camera can see who is using the PC and we can see what is happening on the PC. So we had a situation where someone was doing something they shouldn't and with this technology we managed to stop that. And one of our customers has also asked us to look at deploying this in their cash office. Um, they have an application which sits on a PC where they rec reconcile the cash they've co counted and input that into uh, an application on the PC. High definition camera, we can see how much they're counting. Recording the PC image, we can see how much is being input. And we can reconcile the two. If there's any problem there, then we've, we've got the evidence to show that. Electronic scales. Um, one of our customers, um, Thomas McKnight from Henderson's group, is talking in conference one after lunch. I encourage you to go along. Um, he asked us to integrate with his electronic scales manufacturer. Um, floored me a bit when that request came through. But electronic scales, you type in, let's say, scrag end of neck that you're weighing in your butchers, and the camera is picking up the fact that the scrag end of neck is indeed a big lump of fillet. So a sweethearting operation. In butchers, it's apparently um, a, a massive cause of fraud. And other. Uh, what else are we playing at? Um, another customer has asked us to look at electronic thermometers. Um, these can be IP devices that can sit on the network. So we can now look at triggering when that thermometer reaches above a certain temperature in a freezer, for example. So the trigger above five degrees, the reaction is we email the estates department saying your freezer's off, you're about to lose all the stock, action needs required now. We can also take the archive and let's say take a feed from that every 30 minutes. Little separate archive, picture of the freezer so you know which one you were talking about, and we've measured the temperature every 30 minutes to comply with food hygiene regulations. So, this is our wonderful integrated world. It looks rather like a Union Jack for the Jubilee year. Um, sweetness and light, we're delivering benefit in investigation, 
We're delivering benefit in terms of real-time triggers. Uh, what a wonderful world, a modern world in which we live, and isn't it so easy? Unfortunately not. We've had trials and tribulations with this approach. <laughs> Firstly, motivating third parties to integrate. First route to motivate them is talking to the end user, creating end user pool, so it's the end user motivating that their supplier to integrate with us. Secondly, the, the third party can actually see, in some cases, by uh, integrating with our, our portfolio of solutions, they create market for themselves, because they can go to our existing estate and offer their bit of kit, which is they've integrated. And thirdly, we may perceive there is a return on investment for us to invest, a, invest in them doing the integration. And logically, because the head of marketing is sat in front of me, that should come from the marketing, uh, marketing budget, because we are truly creating market. So next year, we won't be at the show, we'll be paying for some integration. Implementation. This, is, this we have found to be key. We are, we are out of the world of sticking a camera on a wall and recording images. We're into the world of bringing relatively complex software solutions into a business, and all the implementation rules apply. Forget that, you come unstuck. Firstly, the accurate identification of the potential benefits is vital. Firstly, so it can be measured after the event, so we can make sure we've actually achieved what we should be achieving. But more importantly, is to measure uh, the business's um, expectation, manage the business expectation. If they have seen what is possible, their expectation might be here, and we need to limit that to here, step one. User acceptance, training, and ownership. What we're doing here, we're potentially changing the way our loss prevention operatives work. We're sharpening their tools, we're giving them different tools. If they firstly haven't accepted that they need them, if they haven't been trained on them, and if they don't own them, don't know how they work, we won't get anywhere. I've yet to achieve this in my domestic situation. Uh, my other half still uses my chisel as a screwdriver. Consider identification of real-time triggers and alert recipients. This is where the power of real-time alerts can really be diminished. If that trigger is not considered, the business can become swamped. So you might as well ha not have them. You get a, an information overload. And if the recipient of that trigger cannot act upon that trigger in real time, what's the point? You might as well deal with it in a post-event uh, world of data mining. Uh, we had a situation where some poor chappy was driving around the M25. We were feeding him images of refunds going through his till. He could see the refund, and he could see no one was at his till point. So he knew there was probably fraud taking place, driving around the M25, couldn't do anything about it. All we did was frustrate that customer. The fact that he was looking at his phone on the M25 is probably not too healthy either. And step-by-step -step approach. Our union jack of integration has not been achieved by any one customer. Little bits have, and we encourage our customers just to do one little bite-sized chunk and on to the next. We will break the business if we try and do that in one fell swoop. And importantly, support. We have been victims of our own success. We take um, a system, we put two systems together, and we create some real business benefit with that system. It then overnight becomes mission critical. Now, when that system breaks, if we haven't increased our service level agreement, to service that system as a mission-critical system, the business doesn't remember, oh, well, do you remember the world before this benefit? It was awful, wasn't it? God, we really miss it now, it's not working. No, we get slaughtered. So the service has to come up to the same level. And lastly, the more complex the solution, the more first-line support is required. A fairly obvious statement, but it actually comes down to a bit more of a cultural shift within organizations. What we're doing with this approach, we're taking the skill set required to support the solution from loss prevention historically and to IT. It's more of an IT solution. Loss prevention needs to be left, left to prevent loss, and IT needs to migrate into supporting the more complex solutions we are delivering. That's the end of my output, and have I generated any questions from it? <laughs>